Well hello again everybody. I thought what we could do today is look at a way of measuring the sensitivity of an FM receiver. Now there's lots of different types of tests we could use to determine the sensitivity of our receiver. Probably the most popular one for FM is something called Synad, although Synad can be used as AM. So Synad measurements are a really popular test. But the problem with Synad measurements is that they do require some specialist test gear namely a Synad meter. But for those of us that don't own a Synad meter, there's still a very practical test that we can do which relies on a characteristic of the FM receiver which is called FM quieting. But no doubt everybody's noticed when you actually tune your radio into a station the noise level drops. So let's just demonstrate that. I've got a signal generator up here and uh, it's just going to produce a dead carrier. So let me turn the sound up on the radio. Quite loud isn't it? I'm going to turn it up, you might not be able to hear me, so I'm going to turn it up and then I'm going to switch the signal generator. I'm just going to put a dead carrier on. You see it's gone quiet, the radio's gone quiet. So that's a demonstration of FM quietening. And uh, notice I'm not touching the volume, I'm not making any adjustments to the volume. But we'll turn the signal generator off again. Turn it back on and it goes quiet. Now in its simplest terms that's actually all you've got to do for an FM quietening test. Uh, lots of people in the workshop all they will do is as a measure of how sensitive a radio is they'll turn the volume up on it, they will set their signal generator to produce a, a carrier. What's that one set to? Uh, I'm just going to change that. I'm going to put it to an easy number. I'm just going to put it to minus 100 dBm. So they will set their uh, signal generator to a known output level, in this case it's minus 100 dBm or 2.5 microvolts for those playing in old money. And what they will do is they will just have an ear for it, they'll be able to tell the difference between one receiver and another because they're used to dealing with them. So let's just do that again. I'm sure if, you're, if you do a lot of work with radios, you, you know, you kind of calibrate your ear and you would say, oh yeah, that's, that radio is sensitive, that's really quietening down. Whereas if you had a radio that wasn't so good, you wouldn't get the same quietening effect. It would still be, the background noise would still be higher. Now I don't know about you, but my hearing is pretty rubbish and I don't have a calibrated ear. And I also don't work enough with different types of receivers to, you know, have that skill. I haven't picked it up yet. So for those of us that don't have that skill, they've kind of formalised this TEF method. And what they actually do is, we use a voltmeter, because of course, this noise that we're hearing here, again, that, that noise we're hearing is coming out the speaker, but that's just AC voltage. So the formalised method is, we take that AC voltage, and it's very easy if your radio has got like an external speaker jack on it, all we do is we take that audio output and we feed it into a voltmeter, which is what I've got here. So let me just plug in our AC voltmeter. Now when we plug the meter in, of course, the speaker goes silent because it's been taken out of circuit. But I don't know if you, you saw that, I was probably stood in the way. But the, uh, the needle has now gone up to a certain level. If we turn the, uh, the volume up on the speaker, the output volume of the transceiver, you can see that as we turn the volume up, the AC input to the voltmeter goes up. Now I've got another piece of equipment here just next to it and it may look a bit complicated but I assure you it isn't. This big box here, all it is, it's an 8 ohm resistor, it's nothing more complicated than that because we've taken the speaker out of circuit but our amplifier still wants to see a speaker, it wants to see the same impedance. Uh, it just so happens that I've got this 8 ohm test box here, this is a test resistor. If you haven't got a big dummy load like this, don't worry, just get a an 8 ohm or if you've got it a 10 ohm resistor and just strap it across the outputs from the speaker and then your amplifier has something to feed into. It won't need to be a particularly big resistor because you know we're going to be working at quite low audio levels. Now one item that you do need to do this test is you need a signal generator but because of the nature of the test we're not actually turning on the modulation so it doesn't matter whether you've got an AM signal generator or an FM signal generator 
you can just use it. It, do, it doesn't make any difference to the test because you're not going to turn the modulation on. All we're actually going to do is we're going to turn on or off the carrier. And I can do that here. My, my signal generator has a button on it. I can turn the carrier on or off just by pressing the button here. Uh, you could also just disconnect it if you wanted to, so that would probably work as well. So the output from our signal generator, it connects into the back of our transceiver just on the antenna socket. So here's our signal generator connection to the RF input of the transceiver. Now the settings on your transceiver may vary from this one, but typically what you want to do, if the transceiver's got RF gain, you want to turn the RF gain right up to maximum. You want to turn the squelch right down so we are getting an output from the speaker. And then this is a volume control. So if you see that I'm turning the volume control up, if I turn it up the voltage reading goes up and if I turn it down it comes back down again. I'm on the 3 volt scale at the moment so what I'm going to do is it doesn't really matter what voltage level we use but it must be a known voltage level and it's quite nice to use something that's about full scale. So I'm on the AC voltage range here so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to turn the volume control up on the transceiver until we achieve about 3 volts. Now because of the nature of the, uh, you know, the hash, the noise that the transceiver is just picking up, you heard all that static. But what that means is the needle is waving around a little bit and all you can really do is try to achieve the best fit you can on the 3 volt level. So I'm just going to turn the volume up now and I'm going to set it at 3 volts. I'm going to try to anyway. So sometimes it goes a little bit above 3 volts, sometimes it goes a little bit under, but on average I've got it set to 3 volts. Now to give this test its Sunday name, it's actually the minus 20 dB quietening test. So what the test calls up for us to do, we set that reference level, which for us we've just set the output from the transceiver, we've set that to 3 volts. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to turn the signal generator on and we're going to turn up the carrier level until the voltage on our meter here falls by 20 dB. Now because we're dealing with voltage gains that actually means we're looking for a magnitude in the order of 10 so it's going to be a tenth. So at the moment with no carrier we've got 3 volts on our meter so we're then going to turn the signal generator up and we're going to be looking for a reading on here now of 0.3 of a volt. Now we could have used 4 volts and 0.4 or 10 volts and 1 volt. I've just chosen something which is appropriate for the audio amplifier here. It couldn't do 10 volts, it was only able to output about 7. So I've used the lower half of the range, we've set our reference to 3 volts and then we're going to be looking for 0.3 volts which is the equivalent of minus 20 dB. So I hope that makes sense to you. So I've just switched on our signal generator and at the moment it's showing we've got a signal level coming out of here of minus 127 dBm. Okay so I'm just increasing the signal level coming from the signal generator now. And can you see that the audio output from the transceiver it's falling and I'm going to keep increasing the RF level until the needle here falls to 0.3 of a volt which is going to represent our minus 20 dBs. A little bit more I think, it's not far off there. That's a bit too much. Yeah, that's probably about it. And now all we actually have to do is we just read the output voltage off our signal generator. And that's minus 116 dBm. And for those working in old money, again, that's a point about, well it's not about it, is that's 0.35 microvolts. A signal level of 0.35 microvolts has reduced the speaker volume by 20 dBm. So that's the figure that we write down there in our little book that's telling us the sensitivity of our FM receiver. So what we'll do next is we'll try a few different radios and we'll see what signal levels they're sensitive to. Well I know in last week's episode of This and That some of you spotted these other CB radios precariously balanced on the end of my bench here and uh, yep some of you even got the make and model correct. So this one is a communicator NI400DX. So let's see how that compares to the Midland 3001 in terms of sensitivity. Just so you can see everything I'm doing here because I want you to be able to do it at home. So I've just got my 12 volt supply so we're going to need a 12 volt supply here 
Uh, and this plug has a habit of shorting out, but uh, it's currently limited, so it's all good. The next thing I'm going to connect is the uh, the antenna connection, which is being fed from the signal generator. And then we've got a couple of connections here. One of them is external speaker. The other one is PA. Well, I'm not going to connect the speaker yet because I just want to make sure I've got all the settings on the radio correct so it's useful to be able to hear some audio. And I think we were on channel 20 before, weren't we? So this is what I was saying, we've got to turn the squelch off. We've got to turn the RF gain to maximum. Doesn't, really, doesn't matter about tone. We set it midway. So you can see we've got volume. And just to make sure the signal generator is set to the right channel and everything, we'll just switch it on and just test that. So there you go, just to prove it, I've just switched on the RF carry and the radio's gone quiet, so we're getting that quietening effect. So we just need to get access to the uh, speaker now, so I'm just going to plug in this jack to the external speaker connection. And with the carrier switched off, we're just going to turn the volume up on the radio till we get to this 3 volts AC again. And the, the pot on this volume pod, it kind of shows how scratchy it is because it's jumping all over the place, but I haven't serviced this radio yet, so it is what it is. So we just set it as best we can. Okay, so that's, hopefully you can see that, that's about 3 volts on there, maybe just under. Let's switch the carrier on on the signal generator now. And the transceiver should respond to that incoming signal by quietening, so the needle should start to drop. So here we go, let's have a go at that. Nothing yet. Okay, we're at minus 120 and it's come down a little bit. That's minus 117, let's keep going. That's 0.5 volts, but we're looking for 0.3, so we need to go a little bit lower. Yep, and I think we're about there, I think we're at about 0.3 bit difficult to see that because where I put my head the camera's in the way but I think that's about right I think we're about 0.3 of a volt so again that's our drop of 20 dBm so I'm going to write this radio down as being a 440 dx 440 dx level was minus 114 dBm another way of saying that is 0.44 microvolts so we've now got two transceivers on our little scoreboard there. We've got the Midland 3001 and we've got the Communicator 440DX. And just looking at the two, it's actually the Midland 3001 that's winning the race so far. Because this has got better sensitivity. This has got a sensitivity down to 0 0.035 microvolts. Whereas the 440DX could only achieve the same 20 dBs of quietening at an input signal level of 44 microvolts. So the Midland, the Midland is winning. And next on the bench we've got this York JCB 861 CB transceiver. Let's just plug the speaker connection in. And we need to turn the volume up again to achieve our 3 volts. So let's do that. So let's have another go at increasing our carrier signal level. OK, so we've gone there from 3 volts to 0.3 volts, which is our minus 20 dB. And to produce that quietening effect, we needed minus 117 dBm. So let's write that down. Well then, well then, pot pickers, we've had a bit of a shift in our line up there. So just stuck in at number one is our York radio, because that's come in at minus 117 dBm or 0.317 microvolts. So 0.317, that's actually lower than the 0.35 achieved by the Midland 3001. So Midland 3001 is now second place and the uh, 440DX is now in third place. Well, I don't know about you, but I wasn't expecting such good performance from a, a bunch of crappled CB radios. I mean, these haven't been worked on yet or aligned. Some of these are barely working at all. And I'm pretty confident that my signal generator is fairly well calibrated. The output on it is 
is pretty good because I've compared it when I fed it into my uh, spectrum analyzers in the past, uh, multiple different types of test equipment, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that the uh, the output levels from my generators they are they're not going to be perfectly calibrated, but they're certainly in the ballpark. But what I think it would be interesting to do now is let's actually. Uh, compare these readings with a transceiver which would have cost uh, well probably almost an order of magnitude more expensive than any of these so let's try the, uh, the ACO 897 because that's a that's an amateur radio transceiver built to well a much higher cost well just off camera I've just been fiddling around for 10 minutes because I couldn't actually set this 3 volts output on the uh, transceiver I couldn't actually get the uh, the noise level high enough and it's because uh, I fiddle around with the settings on the radio and it's because it does have some digital noise reduction built in so I've had to go into the menus on the transceiver and I've switched all that shenanigans because I couldn't actually set the speaker volume above like 1.5 volts on here it was just automatically limiting so maybe there's a bit of a catch there if your radios if your transceivers if it's got some dynamic noise uh, limiting in you need to go in and switch that off in the menus because it will uh, it will cock your things up so uh, I've been in there I've been in the menus I've switched off the dynamic noise limiting and uh, now we're just going to set our voltage to 3 volts like we did before let's switch our signal generator on and we'll just start to increase the signal level now So coming in at number one we've got a new winner which is the ASU 897 and that's come in at a signal level of minus 119 dBm or 0 0.25 microvolts. Now I guess that's not unexpected but still quite interesting. Now I'm not sure what any of you thought about today's video. I'm hoping that there might be some bones that you can rake through and maybe find some useful tips or tricks and maybe you can go away and just out of interest measure the sensitivity of your own FM receivers. I thought that was quite interesting to do and certainly we'll be able to use those measurements going forward to see the alignment and the radio repairs that we're doing. We can, we can use those baseline figures to see if we've made any improvement because uh, you know, that's the only way to be sure isn't it. But I think until next time, for today, that'll do. As always, thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you again very soon but bye bye for now.